of President Novoa is that he declared war on gangs. 2013, Loja was the safest city that I had ever experienced in my life anywhere in the world. Um, obviously, Ecuador is experiencing sort of an unprecedented crisis to some degree um, with some of the cartel activity and the government's response. But but in Ecuador, we, we were just, we were called an island of, of peace because things like this never happened in the history. When uh, the, the COVID-19 came, took place, it, it just took so took us over, it almost kills us. That's why Ecuador is one of the countries with most, with more numbers of, of deaths in, during the COVID-19. And after that, the economy didn't go up uh, as quick uh, as the other uh, countries in the region. And ultimately, everyone roots for this plan Phoenix to succeed. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Jesse Bayer, Abundant Living Ecuador, and I am delighted to be joined today by Andres Spaudo. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes, Jesse. Excellent, excellent. And Andres has many, many years of tremendous uh, experience here in Ecuador, both politically, socially. Um, he's a political um, advisor, as well as a number of other roles, which he'll share with us shortly. Um, Andres makes his home in Quito, originally from Guayaquil, um, has a couple of YouTube channels that cover, I believe, politics uh, and other events going on in Ecuador as well. Um, so he is really, uh, you know, a, a kind of an insider, a perfect person to speak to about uh, the current situation here that's going on in the country. Um, obviously, Ecuador is experiencing sort of an unprecedented crisis to some degree. Um, with some of the cartel activity and the government's response. And, and we're kind of, uh, I guess we're about a week or, or so into this now. So it's relatively new. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, Daniel Naboa, who, who was recently elected president, has taken sort of a, an iron fist approach to, uh, to gang violence, to organized crime, to cartel activity in the country. And so, there, so there's been all kinds of stuff that's been going on related to that. So I really wanted to bring on an expert, somebody who's from here, somebody who, you know, is tied into the political and social circles here in Ecuador and can speak um, expertly about his thoughts in terms of what's going on in the country, uh, the future of the country, uh, how people are feeling about it, um, some of the specifics in terms of, you know, what, what has happened so far and how he sees it playing out. So again, Andres, I really appreciate you taking the time. Welcome to the channel. Um, do you, if, if you would, if you would just start with a, you know, I gave what the little bit of background I know, but if you could start with just a little bit of background of, of who you are, and then we can jump into some of the political stuff. Yes, of course. First of all, thank you, Jesse, for all that your kind words in that presentation. And I want to send a, a, a big hug and a greeting to all the Abundant Living Ecuador audience. Uh, I'm very honored to be here. You're, you're, you're a, in, the, in the time you have spent here in Ecuador, you have made great friends, who happens to be friends with mine too. So, so it's very nice to meet you now and, to, and the chance to be in your channel. Uh, so I, I live most of my life in Ecuador. Uh, I also live in Chile and Spain. Uh, I'm, uh, I also travel to the States as often as I can. But here in Ecuador, we have been living a nightmare the last six years. And this nightmare just erupted in violence when somebody saw uh, gang members using gunfires on TV. It looks like a Joker uh, movie scene. It, it, for, for a little period of time, Ecuador had been uh, like Gotham City. In, in the principal cities, uh, it's like the the criminal gang members and, and delinquent organizations have been out of control. But this doesn't start now. Uh, for the last six years, we've been watching uh, as citizens how uh, uh, the policy, uh, uh, well, the cops, the, the military, the navy have been reducing his their budgets. 
they they have the budgets, but in the last two governments, I'm talking about Guillermo Lasso's government and Lenin Moreno's government, we saw a continuous decreasing of the execution of that budget. So Guillermo Lasso took the same approach Daniel Novo is taking now. We remembering him uh, about two years and a half uh, ago that he declares the war on, on drugs. But he declares a war, but he didn't assign any budget. So he sent our uh, police members, uh, our army, our military to the war, but he didn't assign budget. So they went without bullets. They went without uh, uh, blinded, co uh, I don't know how to say it, bulletproof vest uh, and without even vehicles. The, since six years ago, not a single car had been purchased to the police, to, to the police members or, or the military. And Daniel Novoa took, uh, took a decision coming from this event of, of gang members appearing on, on national television that the, the whole country just froze. I remember I was eating, I received a WhatsApp message from my daughter saying, this is, this is happening live. And, and all of a sudden, the panic took control of the people. Everybody went home to, to secure in our houses. But the, the problem didn't start this week. It started, as I said, six years ago. But last week, we have one of the gang, uh, gang uh, leaders called Fito, Adolfo Macias, escaped from prison. And, and it's all of the sudden, it was so strange to, to we as citizens be locked down in our houses and all the gang members free. Uh, but by now, uh, President Novoa have took control of, of the prisons because all the prisons were insurrect and took 173 hostages uh, from police members and, and correctional officers. And last Saturday, uh, the military took all the prisons and regained control of all the Ecuadorian prisons that were uh, insurrected. But it's a long way. Uh, this week, we have seen several actions like taking control of the ports, but the most important thing is the past six, year, six years, uh, all politics were saying that this cannot be done. So they declare uh, 24 emergency states, but they, they didn't solve anything. They took the prisons once and again and again, but it didn't change anything. And to, uh, to, today morning, we were making an analysis that what changed between between all those 24 emergency states declarations and this one of President Novoa is that he declared war on gangs, not, not, not as an political mention, he just take action. And what it really changed is that the, uh, in all the emergency declarations that they came before, uh, put, military was going to aid the police. There's no secret that, that in some countries, in most of the countries, sometimes put, uh, police members get infiltrated by, by gang members. They, they got bought, buy, sold, as, as you want to tell it. So in all the 24 emergency states prior to this, nothing really, ha nothing really changed and nothing really happens because there were some members of the police. I'm not saying all the police is corrupt in this country. Of course, there are good elements that protect and serve their citizens, as this week have shown off. But uh, we we now believe that they have tip their, their associates in the criminal world. So nothing really changed. In this occasion, President Daniel Novoa uh, took a stand on it and and declares that. Police is going to aid the military, but it's the army who really runs the show now. And now we are feeling a, 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 feeling, a similar feeling as maybe Nayib Bukele's uh, first two years when he starts the, the, the war on guns. And we are hoping for, for a solution 
a quick solution, but also a long-term solution. But when you reduce the states of the two past government have done in Ecuador, what happened is the following. In the last two years, 200,000 kids left public school. So what's their destiny in life if they didn't have a bachelor's degree or a high school diploma? Their destiny in life, it's only to, to, to work for an organized crime members. It's like you just you don't have to be a genius or a security expert. You have to go and see good fellows to see how, <laughs> how, how, how this operates everywhere in the world. It's not a secret. But, but President Novoa now faces a real challenge of not only have to take in back the security in, in, in Ecuador, that uh, crime rates and also murder rates have gone down dramatically this last week, as we have never expected to happen. Remember, uh, about 10 years ago, Ecuador was the second place more secure in the region to live. We only have a, a murder rate about five into a hundred thousand deaths where where because of of, of murder assassinations or, or, or violence. Right now in the Ecuador we live right now it just sky rise to 40. 40 every a uh, hundred thousand inhabitants. It's a lot. It's a lot. Let me ask you a little, a little bit about about the history, because um, you know, yeah. So I arrived in Ecuador in July of 2013. Um, I arrived in Quito. I traveled um, to Santo Domingo and then along the coast. So I saw kind of all the coastal towns, and then I spent a little time in Cuenca, and then we ultimately made our way to the Loja region. And I've I've lived the whole time I've been here in the Loja region. And when I got here in 2013, Loja was the safest city that I had ever experienced in my life anywhere in the world. Um, right. I, could, I could walk at two o'clock in the morning with a computer in one hand and a cell phone in the other anywhere in the city and have no worries at all. Um, then over the last, <clears throat> let's say, let's say about three years, I would say, in this region, I know it's different in other parts of the country. But in this region, in the last few years, you know, that's changed a little bit. We've seen an increase in crime. We've seen um, even a little bit of gang activity in Loja, which you never had before. Um, and, we've, and we've seen some differences. How do you think the, the gangs and the cartels and sort of the organized crime element, how did they get their foothold in Ecuador? And when did that happen? Yeah, we have to remember uh, geographically, Ecuador stands out as the uh, most uh, western part of the South America and the Pacific. So it makes it uh, uh, an important port. So so it, it's quick to to travel from here to Central Central America or even to North America or Mexico. Uh, it, that's very important. And also remember that Ecuador, it's in between Colombia and Peru. Colombia is the world leading country in producing drugs. But somehow Colombians learn or, or got interested in their cocaine move through Ecuador, through the Pacific. So it can reach Asian markets, Central America, North America, and also 25% of the drug uh, seized in, in Europe right now comes directly from Ecuador. Also, Ecuador have uh, three uh, main uh, non-petroleum exportation products that are uh, bananas. Uh, Ecuadorian bananas are worldwide famous. Also, Ecuadorian shrimp. We are, we are a great producer of shrimp, and our shrimp is amazing, great quality and stuff. And the third main product is roses. We can uh, add to that maybe uh, cocoa, that we, we call it here cacao. But, but we have a, a traditional agro exportation uh, facility. So we have the ports, we have the airports, and, and, and we have products going to North America, Russia, India, China, 
uh, and through whole Europe. So the fact is that if we add the fact that that Ecuador have the dollar as its current currency, it, it makes the the market more uh, I don't know likely, tasteful, uh, good looking for 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 this stock drug traffickers, because if they go to the Venezuela, maybe uh, the currency didn't help them uh, and maybe they turn out losing money. But when they come to Ecuador, the, a strong currency as a dollar, maybe helps them in international transactions, it, it helps them uh, in the laundry process of the money, helps them. Uh, it, it became a, a place easy to, to, to export. Mm -hmm. The fact is, as you uh, as you just mentioned, Ecuador was the second uh, more secure place in the re in the region be because we had a strong state. Even if you agree or disagree with Rafael Correa's policies, we have a strong presence of the state everywhere in the ports, in the borders. So we, we feel safe also on the streets, as, as you mentioned. In Quito, in Loja, in Cuenca, mostly in the Sierra and, and most of the beaches, you can walk around without any any fear. Uh, and nothing can happen to you. There were just, I don't know, uh, few few cases of, of violence, but related to domestic violence and other stuff. Uh, we have this rate of five over a hundred thousand. Uh, inhabitants rate that's it's great even even for American standards even for European standards but what happened is is that when uh, Leningo Moreno got elected in the same party that Rafael Correa as the minute he took office he changed his economic uh, view he changed his political uh, motto uh, and that's okay that can happen, but he, he went again against, I'm sorry, the, the people who elect him, not against his party. It's again, the people who give him the vote. But the most dramatic aspect of it is that it became decreasing the state, lowering the budgets, saying we were already uh, in debt, uh, that we have too much foreign debt, that we have uh, too, too much ex uh, uh, national expense of, of the government, and it became reducing. But it became reducing in, in some aspects that are very harsh to the economies. First of all, uh, state inversion, inversion went down to almost zero. In, in, those, in these six years, we don't have uh, not even a single uh, road done, not even a single uh, electrical plant constructed, and we, the, the state just went into the freezer. We, we just paused. And we have to remember, even, even if, we, if we like or we don't like a politician, when a state invests in their people, when, when a state builds a road, uh, a, a mile of road, there's job to, to the people who works in construction. There's jobs for the people who paint the lines of the road. There's there's jobs for the electrician to the hotels that 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 have to these people that works abroad have to sleep. Uh, the people who sold food, the the man who drove the the truck, the the, the bus driver too. So so it spreads or, or, or money turns around in in the economy. What happened is this. As the state got smaller, the economy got smaller too. So right now, 75 of the economic uh, active population uh, it don't have a stable job in Ecuador. So, so we have to go to informality, to go up in a restaurant, to, to get into any activities they can to survive. This, when uh, the, the COVID-19 came, took place, it, it just took, so, took us over. It, it almost kills us. It, that's why Ecuador is one of the countries with most, with more numbers of, of deaths 
in, during the COVID-19. And after that, the economy didn't go up uh, as quick uh, as the other uh, countries in the region. It just got stuck. And the state and the government be, continued to decrease the state to the point that in 2002, uh, Ministerio del Interior, that, that's, uh, that's in charge of the policy, only used 1% of their budget. Uh, and that's- in what, year, in what year, sorry? 2002. 2002, those were those. 2022. Oh, sorry, sorry. 2000, 2022, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm very sorry. No, uh, no, that, that's what I figured. I just wanted to clarify. Okay, yeah. and it's 1% of the investment bu budget they have. So, mm -hmm. pre again, President Lasso declares the war on drugs uh, and began and, and to... And doesn't fund, fund it. <laughs> and doesn't fund it. It, it, right. it, was, it was very funny. It's not that a war on drugs will, will actually going to work. It didn't work to Richard Nixon in the States. It didn't work in the plan Colombia. If you want to finish the drug problem, maybe you, you should think in alternative as legalizing it, or maybe the, the, the states that buys all this cocaine, maybe they should think about stop, stop using right. it. Right. Uh, and maybe that will be the solution. Uh, I, I love to say a phrase that the, the Stone Age didn't finish because a lack of stones, because okay. something better came in place. Uh, and worldwide, drugs are changing too. So, so people is consuming other stuff. But even though Ecuador is now uh, sending out through their ports and airports more drugs than any time before in the last, last six years, it just explodes. And yeah. it's because the state was not present. So if you didn't have an option to, to have a proper job, and then some friend of you, you see that buys one taxi and they bought the second taxi and then buys the third taxi. My neighbor that owns a taxi is going to get close to me and tell like, what are you doing? No, no, I'm running some errands. And, and when people knowing or without knowing get inside this circle of corruption, uh, of working for, for the crime or working for the mob, it's just very difficult to get out. The state have to be present. And also, it's an obligation of the Ecuadorian state, enhanced now of the law for, for the, the remaining year and a half of his period, uh, to, pro to provide proper alternatives so people can make ends meet, or can get to the end of the month and pay their bills. Mm -hmm. OK, so, so uh, thank you for that. That's a great analysis. So. So basically, we have, you know, we have economic conditions, we have a lack of commitment from the government to fund uh, ongoing operations, and basically the, you know, organized crime sensed weakness, and so they came in, you know, got a foothold, and were able to operate sort of unchecked for some years, and then as they gained in strength, um, that led, of course, to increased violence which was very shocking, I think, to the Ecuadorian people, because I don't think, you know, you guys are used to that here. Um, oh. So it's, it's, it's been kind of a shocking thing in the psyche for the country. So then Naboa comes in, he, you know, he's talking about sort of uh, Bukele type, um, type uh, governance in terms of fighting crime, fighting corruption. Um, he comes in, he declares a state of emergency. Um, he, he declares a state of emergency. Um, we have the a gang leaders uh, escape prison or two, I guess. Then they and this was this was a week ago. This was last week. Right. Um, I, I believe it was actually Tuesday. So I, we're recording on Tuesday. So I think it was seven days ago. Um, then we have uh, the TV station taken over by armed gunmen, like you mentioned. Also, another shocking event that sent you know waves out through the country. And since then, now we've seen kind of an extraordinary response from the military um, and police. You know, we're, there's all these videos circulating. Um, I think I think something like 1,500 people have been arrested. 
Uh, as you mentioned, the jails are now completely under control again. Um, and the, the, the military is taking some very interesting tactics. You know, they're sort of, uh, they've been they're looking for gang tattoos. They're going door to door. They're, they're finding criminals. They're arresting them. They're humiliating them. Um, you also see private citizens, you know, there's these videos circulating of sort of vigilante justice that's increased over the last week where people are catching, you know, criminals and beating them up or, or you know, stuff like this. So you're, you're seeing a, a, a huge response. Um, from my perspective, the, the population of the country is very supportive of that. It seems that um, you know, everybody is behind the BOA, behind the military. They would like to see, you know, this campaign be successful. So how, how do you see, how do you, how have you seen it playing out so far? And then where do you think this goes over the next three months, six months or a year? You know, is this going to be something where you, do you feel like the state is strong enough to accomplish their goals? Or are you concerned that it'll be sort of an ongoing war almost are, like are the are the is the organized crime element strong enough that that they're a force to be reckoned with for the government or is it really just as long as there's a sustained effort it'll be successful what are your thoughts on that prior to the election on october the last year uh, all the uh, political analysts we 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 said that, that any candidate that stands for a Bukele practice or Bukele policy will be on the second round and also will win the election. Uh, so the war presents a, a plan called the Plan Phoenix uh, during his campaign. And in the first month uh, of his uh, presidency, people were reluctant about if this plan even exists. You have to remember last president, Guillermo Lasso, talk, spent two years and a half talking about his plan. He also presents a book, but nobody was able to read it because it was a national security <laughs> concern. But uh, prior to what happened, the people were very concerned. We have to remember maybe the, the thing that starts the fire uh, was the, the kidnap of a uh, former consul of, of United Kingdom in Ecuador, but by the name of Colin Armstrong. He's also a, a big successful uh, businessman here in Ecuador in, in, the, in the field of agriculture. And he was kidnapped for over a week. So everybody in Ecuador wonders if someone with the power and the money and the protection of Colin Armstrong got kidnapped in this country, Right now, from now on, anything can happen. We as citizens that go to the store, that, that use the metro, the, the, the bus stop, anything can happen. And the thing is, it, it was very similar uh, situation as, as, the, as the Colombia of the 90s, after, after uh, Medellin cartels to, took off the city of the, of the 90s. As you can see it on Netflix, on all this narco culture, on, on soap operas, on TV, on songs, all these narco culture that have taken uh, Mexico, then Colombia, and now Ecuador. But but in Ecuador, we we were just we were called an island of, of peace because things like this never happened in the history before. So what 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 triggers this after uh, Colin Armstrong's kidnap and release? The rumors were that he pays for the rescue. He has a, a, a kidnapping insurance and, and he paid for his rescue and then leave the country. Uh, came when the president announced uh, the, the plans, the plan Phoenix, and two gang member leaders choose to escape. They, they escaped from prisons. And after that, all the prisons around Ecuador were taken by, by the inmates. So, so this was a very shocking moment. Then it came the, the moment the gang members took Tese in the middle of a news program. Right in the middle, in the time of lunch that everybody was watching the news, 
on their jobs, on their houses. Or I was in a restaurant having lunch with dear friends, and we were just shocked and panic. People was so afraid that they just went running from wherever they were to hide in their houses. Uh, the response, it looks okay, it feels okay, uh, but we have to remember Ross, Rome wasn't built in a day. So maybe this war on, on crime will not last a week or two or the 60 month the, the president uh, put on the on the dec decreto I, I don't know how, mm -hmm. uh, how yeah the decree the decree yeah the, the decree so i'm, a, I'm mm -hmm. very sorry i'm, very, no, I'm no, a little bit rusty on my on my english but i'm, I'm trying all. to do my best for your audience uh, so uh this maybe wouldn't last six, 16 days uh, especially in the war plans but uh for sure he have won the first battles uh, yeah, pe pe people is reaction it very good. We have to remember this president was selected with a fifty-two percent of the votes. But right now, all the political parties, with few exceptions, have uh, endorsed all Novoa's policies in Congress. We call it Asamblea Nacional here in Ecuador, and, and all the actions are endorsed. the The only action maybe is not being endorsed is is to raise the the IVA. The, the VIT tax that you call uh, in, t in two points. But uh, political parties are also offering so, some alternatives to, to, to raise the IVA. But ultimately, everyone roots for this plan Phoenix to succeed. We, mm -hmm. we, we as, as Ecuadorians, we need to live in peace again. To, we need to took over the public spaces again. You have lived... You have even been living here for about 10 years. So Jesse, you, you know, we, we love the, to, to enjoy the outdoors and, and Ecuador that's not that small uh, country, but, but in, in its area, it's, it's have an amazing diversity. So we love being outdoors. We have beaches, we have mountains, we have rainforest, uh, and, and you live in a beautiful place, uh, Loja province. It's called El Filo de la Patria. And also uh, another phrase, it's uh, uh, the one that doesn't know Loja, does, don't know, don't really know uh, Ecuador. Que no conoce Loja, no conoce el Ecuador en realidad. It's a beautiful place, great coffee, great food. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, and also it's a very natural environment. Everything is organic, everything's good. Everything's good for your health, even the water. Yeah. Even the water. Yeah. Um, so, you know, one of the problems, obviously, when it comes to, you know, having good rule of law and having, um, you know, not having criminal elements have power is stamping out corruption as much as you can. Um, so that's obviously been a problem here um, that I think perhaps also may have increased over the last handful of years. Nabo has talked a lot about um, stopping corruption, holding judges accountable, holding people who are in a position of power accountable uh, if there's any corruption going on. Is that is that attainable? Uh, is that something he, he, you think he can be successful at? I don't know if he can achieve that in, in one and a half years, but it's a very good sign to be trying. Uh, we in Ecuador... Uh, Historically, we have, uh, it's like uh, uh, a small-time crooks corruption, it's, but, but it was almost eradicated from daily life uh, for over 10 years. But then when Moreno came back, uh, you started to, to be asked for money to, to obtain your cedula. Uh, and when, uh, when the pandemic came down, uh, people paid for, for having the vaccine prior to, to other people. And there, there, there was several uh, corruption scandals around the vaccines. We call it the, the VIP vaccinated uh, <laughs> with, with Moreno. Uh, and also it, it continues during the government of Lasso where it, it was a scandal and a scandal and then another scandal of uh, uh, government positions being sold 
or being negotiated, or even uh, Ecuadorian state officers acting against the, the Ecuadorian state because of economic interest. It, it was a very harsh time of, of the Lasso period. Uh, people immediately after the hundred years of the Lasso government, they began to speak of juicio politico. Uh, they began to speak of muerte cruzada or death cross. Uh, uh, that's a, a figure in our constitution. So, so the Assemblea can remove the president or the, or the president can, can remove the Assemblea, whoever caught it first, whoever, whoever fired first, uh, mm -hmm. bad choice of words in this time. <laughs> but, but, but we also, we, we're talking about the revocatoria del mandato is uh, getting signatures to make the, the president leave office. Because since the, the, hundred, the day 101, it, it was very clear to all of us that God, uh, governing or ruling this country, it, it wasn't in the plans of, of Guillermo Lasso. It was making money. And, and, he, right. and he did succeed making money. He made <laughs> right. a lot. He, he's right. the only president of the world that in his tax declaration of last year, he declares $22 million of revenue. Yeah. Maybe he's um, the only president in the world that can declare that. Right. Um, okay. So let me ask you this. Are you, do you, so, you know, when all of this has been going on, again, um, Noboa responded with a very heavy handed approach. You know, that's something personally that I support in this situation. But, do, well, I'll say, I'll add this. We also have countries around the world offering support to Ecuador, right? So we have, you know, Brazil offering police or military support. We have the U.S. and, and, and Ecuador talking about potential support from the U.S. We have other countries offering their support to Ecuador. Um, if, do you have any concern? A, with Ecuador strengthening ties with the U.S. militarily. Uh, the U.S. used to have a military base here. Um, that left under Correa, I believe. Um, do you have any concerns if, if about that? If, for example, a military base were to come back, which I, I think is being talked about. And do you have any concern that the state could overstep in terms of their their power or just sort of their actions that could um, cross over into something that people have to worry about now, the state versus criminals. Is that a concern with you at all or is that irrelevant in this circumstance? I think right now the, the main uh, concern of people is staying alive. Uh, but uh, if it's been talked a lot, especially in media and the opposition of the government about the return of a Manta base or a so-called plan Ecuador, that it's part of the last, uh, last talk about security. But the fact is, Colombia at, at the time had 18 American, US American bases on a, a Colombian soil, and it didn't, it didn't work at all. Colombia is producing right now 150 times more cocaine than it, that Colombia did when Pablo Escobar was alive. So right. uh, for that to happen, uh, Ecuadorian constitution have to be a man. And also Ecuador will have to resign to two international treaties uh, to, to allow an international army to act on Ecuadorian so soil. Right now, what we have on grounds, on Ecuadorian grounds, is uh, security experts, intelligence experts, but it's very, it's a very far away panorama to think about uh, an American soldier firing a, firing a gun in Ecuador, as it already happened in Manta. Uh, what happened with Base de Manta, it's that contract expired uh, and the new constitution didn't allow it to, to happen. So it, it, it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't removed. It's, it was not the first time in history Ecuador have a, an American base. We, we have to remember on, on World War II, Galapagos Island and, and its airport on Baltra uh, works uh, as a refill airport for, for the, the the American troops fighting on, on the on the Pacific scenario. Okay, Andres, um, last question. You've been very generous with your time. Um, 
you know, one of the one of the things you hear people talk about here that I think is is um, maybe a contributing factor to some of the crime that we've seen over the last few years is, you know, there's kind of a perception. And I don't know how much of this you, you I'm sure do, but I don't know how much of this is really fact or or how much of it is just sort of people talking. But there's a there's a sense that people have that kind of crime essentially goes unpunished, right, where you'll have, you know, you'll have somebody break into your house. The, the self-defense laws here are very weak. So, you know, if someone breaks in your house and you shoot them, you're in trouble, potentially, um, for, for one thing, for example. But you'll have people, you know, complain that, well, the cops, the police don't really do very much. And then even when people get arrested, they go in and they come back out and the sentences are very short. And so there's not, you know, you, if somebody is, you know, breaking in your house and there's an armed robbery, it's not like they're going to spend 20, 30 years in jail. You know, maybe they'll they'll do some time, but, you know, not enough to have, to really to really be a deterrent. Um, is that something? Do you agree with that? Number one. And then number two, do you are they going to address that? Do you think they'll be more strict, stringent or or more um, more uh, punitive sentencing guidelines for crimes? Is that a problem, and do you see any changes there taking place? Well, let, let me start uh, this, to answer this question with a phrase. A great Mexican, Emiliano, Emiliano Zapata, over 100 years ago, he pronounced these words, that uh, if there's no justice to the people, there cannot be peace to this or any government. And the thing is, if we don't have the sense of justice that we in Ecuador don't have, because this uh, decreasing of the state, this continuously decrease of the states to privilege uh, bond payments, to privilege uh, tax exceptions for, for the super rich in Ecuador, it takes us to a place wh where the judicial system doesn't have a printer or doesn't have a paper. I and mean, when you're on trial, you go to the to the office that right now we have an office, it's a beautiful building, it, it's almost 10 years, old, but they don't have uh, bulbs, they don't have air conditioners, and they don't have printers, and they don't have papers. So if you analyze the problem, you have to be, uh, you have to do the complete analysis. If you, as the policemen lack of funds to mobilize their cars before, or, or, or didn't have guns, or didn't have bullets, or didn't have bulletproof vests, also the judicial system is, uh, suffering of lack of funds. So, and you also have to look very carefully who runs the, the, the Fiscalía. Fiscalía General de la Nación. Yeah, so, that's, so, um, that's a, just, a, 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 sorry. A, sorry, Andres, look, just to, just to okay. translate that, that's the prosecutor's office. Go right ahead. Right, right. It's the prosecutor's office. You have to watch them very carefully because we have in Ecuador, 14,000 murders in the last three years. How many of, of those uh, cases have prosecutions? How many of those cases uh, have uh, the, the, the crime author in jail? Uh, and wh when the prosecutor's office is using for doing politics, we're losing the time here. We're losing the time. If, if you have to change, everything has to change or nothing will change at all. Sure. Okay, um, again, thank you so much for your time. Is, is there anything, Andres, that, you, that I haven't covered that you would like to mention, or is there any, I don't know if you are involved in stuff that you'd like to shout out. Is there anything that you'd like to talk about uh, to direct people to, or anything you're involved in you'd like to, to chat about? You're welcome to do that as well. Oh, thank you very much, Jesse. Um, first of all, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to get to your audience and, and getting them to know what's going on here in Ecuador. And I want them to invite them to, to go to the YouTube and subscribe to our channel. It's at La Colmena. I will spell it in English uh, to, to make it more, more easy for you. It's L-A-T-O-L-M-E-N-A-E-C, E and the letter C. 
as in Ecuador. La, La Colmena S, that's our channel. And we have every day the, the news of what's going on. And also uh, we are present on Twitch, on Facebook, on Instagram, TikTok, and now on Spotify too. Fantastic. And I'll, I'll put a link as well um, to your channel in the description once we publish this on YouTube. Um, so you guys can check, check Andres' work out there. Andres, again, thank you for your time. Much appreciated. I think um, people will get a lot of value uh, out of this perspective. And um, it's, great to, it's great to chat with you and me. Thank you very much. Jesse, nice to meet you. You Bye. as well. Have a great day. If you're interested in real estate properties, all of our property videos will now be uploaded on a different channel. Please click the link in the description down below.